In this video, we're going to learn about the last two connectives, which are both of conditional type. They are some of the most important connectives we're going to look at because mathematics is all kinds of sentences saying if this statement is true, then this one is also true. But they are also more difficult to understand than simple conjunction and disjunction. So let's get started. The conditional statement, if P then Q, is true only if Q always follows from P. That's another way of saying that whenever P is true, Q must also be true. Its truth table is a little counterintuitive. So let's fill it out the way that we're used to filling it out. True, true, false, false. True, false, true, false. Okay, so Q has to always follow from P. If P is true, then Q must also be true as well. So this first row is okay. But our second row, where P is true but Q still isn't, is false. Now what do we do when P is false? The conditional statement just says that if P is true, Q has to be. Uh, if P is not true, then Q can be whatever it wants. So it's true in both of these second cases. Here's an example to kind of put your head in the right spot. Let's say that your instructor tells you, if you do your homework, then you will pass the test. Well, case one, you do your homework and you pass the test. Great, that's what you would hope happens. If you do your homework and your instructor says, if you do your homework, then you'll pass the test, then you would expect to pass the test. In case two, if you do your homework but don't pass the test, then someone was lying to you. So in that case, the instructor statement would have been false. Uh, and then finally, in cases three and four, if you don't do your homework, then it doesn't matter whether or not you passed the test because the instructor said something conditional on if you did do your homework. So if you don't do your homework, then that is uh, still within the bounds of what the instructor told you. If we have a conditional statement, if P then Q, its converse is the statement, if Q then P. That's just a handy definition to have. So to the above example, the converse of if you do your homework, you'll pass the test is if you pass the test, it means you did your homework. And then finally, we have the biconditional statement, P if and only if Q. This is the statement that is true if P and Q have the same truth value and false otherwise. So we'll have P is true, true, false, false. Q is true, false, true, false. If P, P if and only if Q is true in the first and fourth rows so long as those truth values match and false otherwise. The example here is the statement, you will pass the test if and only if you do your homework. So this means not only what our first example did, that doing your homework is sufficient to pass the test, but also there's nobody that's able to pass the test without doing their homework. These two events are in perfect correspondence with each other.